In today's session, we're going to focus on a reading of an easy passage, which is actually ironically not so easy. So in this passage, what we have is a bit of a narrative and it's almost like a rite of passage and a coming of age story at the same time. So we've got quite a lot to unpick in relation to the significance of particularly the word passage um, and the notion that it has very, um, very large applications to lots of different ways in which you could read significance in this poem. If we start with features of form, obviously it's the most important, uh, you've got the fact that this is a free verse poem. Now, it's not a dramatic monologue because obviously it's told from the thir third person perspective. So essentially this is a narrative poem here. So the free verse stink single stanza format actually lends itself quite well to the kind of fluidity of the narrative and the fluidity of the narrative voice. Interestingly, in the poem, there are actually only five complete sentences. And the first sentence is essentially the first third of the poem, but it's the use of enjambment that actually keeps the one thought going throughout that first section of the poem. And then what we start to notice is the use of different discourse markers and punctuation to mark natural shifts in the next sort of stages of the poem. So the idea of the passage becomes again quite significant because our passage through this poem um, kind of mimics the passages and journeys that are implicated or pragmatically implied um, at some different other stages in the poem. So if we consider just the opening once she's halfway up there. So again, we've got the notion of the progress of a journey that she's midway through a journey. So to be halfway up there is quite um quite ambiguous in the sense that we don't know if there is the direction, if there is a singular point of reference. It assumes that the reader is in the same knowledge standpoint as the narrator themselves. Now, the narrative perspective in this poem is quite interesting. And again, we can link back to maybe some of the ideas in the anthology and the other poems that deal with the notion of observation and voyeurism because the narrative perspective is looking on in this text in the same way that there are other perspectives looking on in other texts at some of the other characters um, and some of the other personas in the text. But it's not looking on in, in a similar way to perhaps some of the more sinister perspectives that we've seen before, or it could actually be read in something a bit more sinister um, than it initially appears. So there's lots of different options um, about the way in which this narrative voice is positioned and also positions the reader. So we're being introduced to this poem once she is halfway up there, as in the sense that we know what there is referring to. So the writer, or certainly the, the persona from which it's written, is assuming that we have the same vista, that we have the same perspective um, as they do. And again, the reference to she and throughout this poem, the, the reference to pronouns uh, is deliberately ambiguous. It doesn't ever really identify the girl other than the fact that she is the a universally applicable teenage girl doing something universally applicable of teenage girls. So everything about this poem seems to indicate a kind of every man style. Um, but at the same way, there's something significant about this experience, this girl and this particular house. Um, so the fact that she's halfway up there signifies halfway through the journey, which is the physical perspective that the narrative voice is talking about, but also halfway through this journey into adulthood, perhaps. So there's two different ways that we could explore this idea of being halfway. So that's why it's highlighted there, because there's lots of different potential interpretations that could be made from it being crouched in her bikini on the porch of her family's house. Um, again, if we consider the idea of being crouched on the porch roof, you've got this sense of somewhere in between childhood and adulthood, she's trying to do something adult, but acting like a child in the process. The verb choice there is deliberately um, connotative of, of a children's action to be crouched somewhere as in hiding. So you've got this sense that the connotations of her actions are childlike, but she's childlike in the process of trying to do something that adults do. So again, we've got this kind of typically teenage um, deviance um, in terms of her behaviour streak. But the notion of being crouched is quite important because, again, it sort of mimics the fact that she's halfway up there. She's in between these different stages. So parts of her have been reduced in some way um, into this process that she's going through. Um, and the fact that she's trembling, she knows that the one thing she must not do is think of the narrow windowsill. Um, and again, the enjambment runs us through that idea as if there is this sense 
and this is where the narrative perspective comes in very clearly here, how does the narrator know that she is particularly scared, I guess, of this moment of thinking about the narrow window. So how does the narrator know that she's scared of heights, perhaps scared of the how precarious this situation that she's in might be? Also, the narrow the um, the narrow windowsill there could be metaphorical of the idea that she's she's on the brink, she's on this precipice of adulthood. So to think about the next step, to think about the void she's about to potentially fall into, um, suddenly we get this much bigger sense that this is this simply metaphorical of a journey that's that's much bigger than the action that's that's being described. Quite simply, um, the.